But one final time, guys, it's time to say goodbye to Antoine Hubert, the 22-year-old man from France. He was sadly took away from us last Saturday at Spa. And what we're going to do today is celebrate the career he had and how good of a driver he was at only 22 years old. And talk about, of course, what a sad loss this is. So please, guys, join me today in paying tribute to Antoine. The first off, guys, we're going to do a brief summary of his career. Now, I will admit I did not follow his career that well. I started following his career at the end of his GP3 title season. But I have done some research and I can comment on, you know, the career he has had so far. So, for example, back in his days in karting, he was racing with drivers like Charles Leclerc and was quite a successful driver in karting. He absolutely had his moments, had his victories and was a well-respected driver when in karting. But people really did start to notice Antoine and his abilities once he went to the French Formula 4 series. Where in his first season of single-seater racing, he won the French Formula 4 championship. Something that for someone so young and so inexperienced in single-seater cars is a fantastic achievement. And was absolutely the start of something special. Then in the couple following years after that he was now starting to race in the Formula Renault series. Not the 3.5 series but the 2.0 series. Now these seasons weren't as good for Antoine but he was learning and he was improving. As of course he was now racing at a level that was a lot higher. And these experiences and these times of learning was the absolute best thing he could have in the years after. As year on year before he got to GP3 in 2017, he was steadily improving, with his results getting better and better up until the point he became George Russell's teammate in 2017 in GP3. And of course saw his teammate Russell in 2017 go on to win the championship, but Antoine's time of course would come. As of course in 2018 he went on to win the GP3 championship and because the GP3 championship ended after 2018 he is now forever the gp3 champion and he was absolutely deserving of this title because he was so consistent at being at the front in that series and again like he did earlier on in his career he perfectly showcased how good he could be and that earned him a promotion to formula 2 for 2019 and because of his previous success, he was definitely a driver to watch and he did have a pretty good Formula 2 season. And there are two things from his career that everyone will remember. First off, his very, very close win at Monaco. He did very well to just about hold on for victory at Monaco and did what every driver wants to do in an open wheel racing car. Win at Monaco. And this picture right here shows you everything it means to a driver to win around Monte Carlo. And thankfully for him, he was able to experience that. And was also able to experience victory around his home circuit, Paul Ricard. Where he got a brilliant support from the French fans and a brilliant ovation when he crossed the line to win in France. Another truly great and emotional moment for him and the Formula 2 world. To see a new driver already celebrating home victory in such a great way. And considering that he was only 22 and he was definitely one of the better drivers in the Renault Driver Academy. He was absolutely one to watch in terms of getting to Formula 1 later on in his career. But sadly when we came to Spa it all came to an end. As during the feature race on lap 2 sadly his life was took after a crash with Juan Manuel Correa. In what can only be described as one of the worst crashes in the history of motorsport. And a crash that unfortunately I had to see live. And it is one that hopefully I will never ever have to see again. But after the news of his passing the motorsport community went into shock at the loss of someone so so young. The 31st of August 2019 is truly a very very dark day. But there are two things that I think we have absolutely learnt from that day. One, the F1 and motorsport community is a very tight-knit bunch. Plenty of us in this community do debate a lot and we do, you know, almost basically shout at each other a lot. 
But it was great to see that the community came together when this happened. And for as toxic as this community can be at times, we finally came together. And for one of the few times, it actually felt like a community. But also another thing that has come out of this is the push to make these cars even safer. Of course, in the last 30 or 40 years, the FIA has made racing around the world even more safer than it was before. And we absolutely have to thank them for that. But after the death of Antoine, that means we have to keep pushing. We have to keep making progress on making racing safer. And we should never, ever stop in making racing safe. There are plenty of people out there that I've seen that have said in the past that racing should be made more dangerous because it's more exciting. To those people, I say, shut up. Yes, our entertainment does matter, but not to the point of risking people's lives. Yes, we want to be entertained, but people crashing or even being killed is not entertaining. Nobody should die doing something they love. And that is why we have to keep making racing safe. Now, the FIA again has made plenty of progress, such as the halo or making the side pods or the front wing safer. And also they've made it a lot harder for drivers within the car to suffer a bad injury or even more. But unfortunately and obviously motorsport is always going to be dangerous. These things are going to happen but we should not accept it happening. And we should try to do our best to make sure it doesn't happen. Because like you guys Antoine Hubert had dreams like everyone. His dream was to win the World Championship in Formula 1 with Renault and also at Paul Ricard. Those were the dreams of someone who is no longer with us. So let's try to keep the dreams alive of many men and women who race. And for the last time I say, rest in peace Antoine Hubert.